Hello everyone, I'm Karen from Close to My Heart. Over the next four weeks, we are going to be giving you a series of really fun and cool watercolor pencil videos where we teach you an array of techniques. Also, I just want to mention, we already have posted here on YouTube a series of watercolor paint videos. So you may want to go back and watch those because what we're doing today is building on some of those skills and adding new ones in too. Now, before we get started, you're going to want to like, subscribe, and turn on that bell notification so you never miss a Close to My Heart video. Let's get started on some gorgeous art. In front of me, you see a really fun watercolor card. There's a few techniques on this card that I want to point out because we're going to be showing one of them today and learning about one of them today. And then I'm going to be bringing this card back again in week four so that you can see some of the fun things in the background we've done as you learn those. So let's look at some of this amazing shading. You can see how soft and smooth all of the coloring looks there on the large flower and the smaller flower and even the leaves. And as I move that a little bit, I think you can, it looks so lifelike because of that really beautiful shading. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're going to be using our watercolor pencils in what happens to be my very favorite way of using them and that's actually dry. So let's move over here in my work surface and get started on some of the shading. There are a few tips and tricks I wanna give you before we get started coloring. Number one, you want to take a sharpened pencil. You can see I've got a nice sharp purple pencil here. I'm gonna use this one as my example. And you might think that's exactly what you want to color with, but actually it's not at all what you want. So you wanna get a scratch piece of paper and I'm gonna bring mine over where you can see this little tip really close up. So I have a very pointy tip on my pencil right now, and a pointy tip is going to make you see a lot of the lines as you're coloring, as opposed to this really beautiful, smooth look on this flower. So to be able to do that, we want a flat edge on our pencil. So instead of this pointy edge, we can just take our watercolor pencil and just one side of it, just color on a scratch piece of paper until that edge is flattened. And let me turn this so you can see how I've got an angled, flattened edge there. And then let's talk about a couple of other things while we're right here on the scratch piece of paper because I'm gonna draw you a couple of pictures. You can see that the shading on these flowers and leaves looks amazing. When you look at this red flower, it looks like the sun is right on top of it, doesn't it? Because the lighter areas are the area that the sun would be shining on the very most, whereas those darker areas are the areas that are further away from the sun. And that's something to think about as you're shading. Now let's do a couple of little examples here. Let's pretend we had a flower, and you guys will just have to forgive my illustrations. There's a purpose. <laughs> and I want you to pretend that the sun is up here on the left side of our page. And now you can tell why I like to stamp instead of draw my own pictures. <laughs> so if my sun were shining down on my flower from the left side, the darkest part of my flower would be over here, wouldn't it? And the lighter part of my flower would be over here a little bit more. So let's bring this card back in. If my sun on this example is shining straight into my flowers, like you see here, this is where it would be lightest, right there in the center. Now there's a little bit of a difference in the leaves and I want you to look at those. This petal of this flower is overlapping the leaves a little bit, so the shadow of that flower would cast a little bit darker green on the leaves. So that's the way that I think when I'm getting ready to color. And let me just bring my color pencils over here too. When I color, quite often I will just even put a little something there to remind me where my sun is so that as I color, I can go, oh, it's coming from the left. All the dark is gonna be more over to the far sides. Or it's coming from the right. They're gonna be over on this side. Or if it's coming from the top here, the dark will be at the bottoms of my flowers 
or if they're facing the sun right above it, like what we're saying is happening here, it's the lightest part will be in the centers. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea about what you want to think about while you're coloring with your pencils. Now I'm gonna bring in a few pencils that we'll be using on this today. And I'm also going to bring in my Versamat. Something else that helps you get a really nice, smooth look on your flowers is to have a surface that's not really, really hard. Like what we're working on here is a wood table and that is really hard. So the more I color on a hard surface, the more I'm gonna see those lines. Now our Versamat, on one side is foam, which is great to stamp on, and it's also great for when you're coloring. So I'm gonna just slide this right underneath the paper that I'm using to color with, and we will just work on our example right here. All right, I'm going to keep the card right next to where I'm working so that you can see, and we can all just ignore my son, and we're going to grab a red pencil and start on this flower here. Now when I shade, I like to start in the part I want to have darkest. So I'm gonna actually make my pencil have that flat tip like we demonstrated a second before so that I can use that to go around. Can you see that angled tip? It's kind of um, almost a 45 degree angle, I guess, if I were describing it on the tip of my pencil. And I like to take that flat part and go where I know is gonna be the darkest part of my area and follow the shape. And I'm gonna press a little harder on the part I want darkest. And then maybe even go back and forth a little bit on top of it. You can see how nice and smooth that is. And then as I work my way in, I'm just gonna give a little less pressure on my pencil. Put a little bit of dark right here because the center is probably casting a little bit of shadow. And then I'm just going to work my way into the center softly following that shape. And as I move into where it's going to be lighter, I'm just pressing a little less hard. So now that I've got that petal colored, I can look at that and go, I like that, but I want it to be a little darker on the edges. So I can go back and add that. Watercolor pencils can function just like you're seeing right now, like a regular colored pencil. There's at least in my opinion, no need to have both when you can just use your watercolors to get this beautiful, soft, dry look. And you can see how easily that's coming together. Let's actually move to this flower. I'm gonna grab a more of a brown red and then do the exact same thing here. So I'm gonna create my flat edge right here on my paper. And I'm still on that kind of soft surface. You could use something like um, a piece of foam, especially if you purchase our stamp sets, there are foam in each of our stamp sets or our Versamount works great or anything you have that's kind of a nice soft surface, but not too far apart, the spongy part, not too far apart. Now we've got a nice big petal right here in the front. Let's do that one so it'll be really easy for you to see. Again, I'm using that flat edge of my pencil and I'm gonna follow the shape of that petal. And then I'm giving it a lot of pressure here. And then as I'm moving in, I'm just lessening how hard I'm pushing so that I'm getting a little bit lighter look as I go. And you can see that because of the angle that I created on that pencil, instead of that sharp pointy tip, and because I am pushing a little less as I go, there are no lines and it looks like it's almost seamlessly blended. Isn't that pretty? Now, just before we end, let's do a little bit of shading by blending colors together while they're dry. So if you look at this leaf right here by the red flower, I blended a yellow and a green, which you look at that and it looks just green, right? But look at these leaves right here below. 
I just used the green on those. Can you see the difference in color that you can get just by mixing a couple of colors together? So this is just the green. This has some green and yellow. I'm gonna start with the green and give you a little bit of an example. Now remember, we talked about how the sun is shining straight on to this example here that I'm creating, but the flower that is on top of the leaves is also casting a shadow because as the sun shines, it's casting that shadow around it. So we know that around that petal is probably gonna be the darkest part of that leaf because of the shadow that's being cast by the flower. So let's start in the area we want to have the darkest and follow that shape. I'm gonna have it be a little darker down here. So the parts I want darkest, I'm coloring first and trying to go with the shape of the leaf so that it doesn't distract from that shape. As you, if you work with the shape you're working on, you're going to find that it looks like more like something you'd see in nature. Whereas if you took, I'm gonna give you a bad example here. If I took my pencil here on this, and instead of going with that rounded shape, I just colored like this. Can you see that you can see all those lines? Whereas when I'm using that flat side of my pencil, right here on this leaf, and following the shapes that have been given to me just by the shape of the leaf, then I'm going to get a much more realistic, soft look. And I am adding just a little shading around the edge of the leaf because the sun's still in the same spot. So now we're thinking about where the sun is and also what might be casting a shadow above it. So I'm adding some darker spots around that petal that's casting a shadow and around the edge of the leaf that might be curling down a little bit away from the sun, and then working my way in to blend with that flat side of my tip. Okay, so that's what we have that's just the green. Now I can take my yellow, also flatten that, and come in and just kind of go over the areas I just colored, maybe even push a little harder in the lighter parts because this yellow is a lighter color than the green, but the two of them together are going to create more of a yellow green leaf, almost like um, one of my very favorite plants that I love to put in my pots is called sweet potato vine. You know how it's kind of a lime green as opposed to a green we might see on this other leaf here, so that we're differentiating between the two different kinds of flowers and leaves. So now you can see I've created kind of a yellow green, really pretty, almost limey green. And I can use that yellow, instead of picking up a lime green pencil, I can use this color of the yellow to add even more variance to this leaf so it looks more lifelike than if I had just colored the whole thing with a yellow pencil to begin with. Now let's color this leaf right next to it. Luckily our example is not getting used anywhere because I'm gonna do a few things that would make me not be able to use it. And that is the two leaves from this flower are gonna be two totally different colors, but I want you to see them right next to each other. I want you to see the darker green with no yellow added next to the green that we did add yellow to. And you can see neither one is better or worse than the other, but it just gives you a whole different look. You see the two different colors of green that I've got going on there just by mixing a little bit of another color. Now let's even grab a brown just for fun and see what I can do by adding just a little bit of brown in the parts that are nearest to my flower. We're gonna get even more shading. Now I think sometimes it just takes playing a little bit with what you're working with to find out what colors blend together. But it's kind of the same concept as watercolor paints. If you have a green that's a little bright that you want to feel a little more earthy, 
mixing in a red brown or a red will actually give that leaf a better look that more earthy look can you see how i just gave that even more depth with that brown now what if i take um kind of a maroon color let's see if i've got something like that close by oh how about gray let's take the gray Oh, that tip's needing a sharpening job. I'm actually going to take purple and surprise you. Let's take this darker purple and even add a little bit of that in this shading we're doing on this leaf. You'd never think to put purple, but it's actually going to give us a really fun look. And what I'm going to do is see if I can pull this up. Let's see how far I can pull this up before we lose focus so that you can see. I have on this leaf right here mixed a green, a yellow, a red brown, and a little bit of purple. And look at how much depth we created in that leaf as opposed to the one where we just used the green or just the red or just that red brown that's going on right there. Hopefully that's some fun, exciting examples for you to go ahead and try on your own. And so that will conclude video number one for our watercolor pencil classes. I hope that you'll join me for our video number two next week as we do something totally different with our watercolor pencils than we did today.